Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my 2024 TBR. These are all of the books that I wanna read this year that are at the top of my TBR that I'm gonna be prioritizing. I thought in order to create this TBR, I would put together a list of categories to help me select books. Cause I get a little overwhelmed every year trying to pick out the books that I wanna read. I have five categories to help me select these books. Books from five star authors books that have been recommended to me, books with tropes or themes that I typically give five stars, rereads, and then what I'm calling push picks. These are ones that just kind of need that extra motivation to read them for whatever reason. So I'm going to start with the books that I have chosen from five star authors. These are all authors who wrote my favorite books. Let's just get her out of the way, T. Kingfisher. I have my entire T. Kingfisher collection here behind me. There are many options that I could choose from, but I'm going with Pal Paladin's Grace. This was actually on my TBR last year and I never got to it. I feel like I'm holding on to this book for a rainy day, but I recently got this new edition, this new cover. The original one looks like this, but this one is Ugh, she's stunning. So this one is a fantasy romance that takes place in the same world as Sword Heart, following a paladin and a fugitive who are thrust together when they accidentally witness an assassination attempt and now they need each other in order to figure out what's going on and survive. I'm very, very excited to read this. I have such high hopes for this one. I really, really think I am gonna love it a lot. Next up, I have Evocation by S.T. Gibson, who wrote A Dowry of Blood, one of my all-time favorite books, and it is still the only book that I've read from her. So I'm very excited to get to this. She actually has two releases this year, one in February and this one, which comes out in May. For the sake of this video, I'm only putting books on here that I physically have copies of at this moment. So this one is about secret society, curses, exes turned rivals, turned lovers. It just sounds like it has all of these things that I'm gonna love and I'm slightly nervous because of how much I love A Dowry of Blood and the fact that that's the only S.T. Gibson book that I've ever read. So I don't really know what to expect with another one of her books. And then the third one I'm also a little nervous about and that is The Violence by Delilah S. Dawson who wrote Bloom, which was my top favorite book of last year. The way that that book has literally been embedded in my DNA. And Delilah S. Dawson has a huge backlist of kind of random things. Like she writes a lot of Star Wars books, a lot of comic books, YA, middle grade. Like she writes anything and everything. But I feel like Bloom was so specific. And that's why I'm a little nervous to read some of her backlist. But I had already had this on my shelf and I didn't even realize it was the same author. It says three generations of abused women must navigate their chilling new reality as a mysterious epidemic of violence sweeps the nation. Again, I'm nervous about this. I feel like when I read a book by an author, it became like an all-time favorite, but I've never read anything else from them. It has the opportunity to go either way where they will become like an auto-buy favorite author or it'll be a one-hit wonder. So we will find out where both of these fall amongst that. The next category are books that were specifically recommended to me from various people. So the first one is Iron Widow by Sharon J. Zhao. This is a YA sci-fi where aliens have invaded and are attacking humans. So in order to fight back in this war, humans have created these chrysalises, which are like these giant mecha transformers that people use and pilot to fight the massive gigantic aliens. And you're following a main character who sets out on a quest for revenge after her sister was murdered by one of these chrysalis pilots. I've been recommended this book so much to the point where I can't ignore it anymore. I have to read it. Everything that I've heard about this just sounds like something that I'm really gonna love. The next one is The 13th Tale by Diane Setterfield. This one has been recommended to me a lot as like a gothic seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo kind of vibe. It's following a reclusive author who has spent the past six decades penning a series of fairy tales. And now that she's old, she's ready to reveal the truth about her extraordinary existence and the violent tragic past she has kept secret for so long. It sounds like a combination of things that I am really gonna love. I have very high hopes for it. And then the third one that has been recommended to me is Lore and Lust by Carla Nicole. This is a queer vampire romance that I've been told is like very cozy and whimsical, which just sounds super fun to me. You guys know I love cozy books and I feel like this year in particular is gonna be my year of like cozy softer books. I want to read more like cute soft romances and I feel like this is going to fit in with that theme. Like I love a good dark luscious 
vampire story, but a cute cozy one sounds amazing too. All right, the next category are all books that have themes or tropes that I have been known to give five stars. So the first one, speaking of vampire stories, <laughs> The God of Endings by Jacqueline Holland. This one I think is a potential five star because one, it follows a main character throughout multiple centuries, which I love. This also is kind of more of an unconventional vampire story because this is about a woman who was turned into a vampire and it's more about her enduring what that means to be immortal. And I just feel like that is going to be the potential for a really great, interesting story. The next one is A Fellowship of Bakers and Magic by Jay Penner. This one is a cozy fantasy mixing great British baking show with Lord of the Rings, which I feel like I don't even need to explain why this is something that I might give five stars. But yeah, this one is about a baking competition that this woman enters in and she is the only human in the competition. Everyone else is elves and wizards and goblins and they all have magic. So she is a little bit unsure how she's going to be able to win this competition. It just sounds so fun and cozy and cute. And then the third one is The Spear Cuts Through Water by Simon Jimenez. This one I think could be a potential five star because I have heard that the writing plays with perspective and audience. I believe that there is like a mixture of second person in here, a mixture of following like random perspectives that you meet throughout the story, getting backstory on side characters. I love books like that. A few that I can think of off the top of my head that have elements like that are The World Gives Way, The Fifth Season, Station Eleven. This one is following two warriors who are tasked with accompanying a god and protecting them while they journey across the land to end the tyrannical reign of this royal family. I've just been hearing such amazing things about it. Okay, the next three are all rereads. I have been trying to allow myself to reread books more. I feel like in previous years it was something that I didn't really prioritize, but towards the end of 2023, I have been rereading a lot of books and just having a great time with it. So I have three books here. Two of them are first books in a series that I never ended up continuing and I would like to finish those. But this first one is a standalone that I want to reread because I feel like I am in a place in my life where I would appreciate this book more than I did the first time. And that is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. Now don't get me wrong, I loved this book when I read it. I think I gave it like between four and five stars, I'm not sure. But I did really, really enjoy it. But I don't think it was something that I I ever really thought about again. However, I've been thinking about it more and more recently and feeling like if I read it again now, it could have the potential to be like a favorite book. So I would like to reread this this year and see if I feel any differently. Then we have The Library of the Unwritten by AJ Hackwith, which was one of my favorite books the year that I read it. It is so fun. This follows a library in hell where all unwritten stories go. You have a librarian who is protecting all of those stories and then a character from one of the unwritten stories escapes his book and sets on a quest to find the author to make them finish the story. So much else happens. There's like this war between angels and demons and it was just so, so fun. But I never ended up continuing the trilogy so I would like to reread this and finish it. I just feel like this was one of those books that had such a unique and cool concept that I've never seen done before. Lately, I've been thinking about and wondering where the story went to after this book. And then another first book in a series that is now complete that I would like to reread and finish is The First Sister by Lyndon A. Lewis. This is a sci-fi book that I thought was so, so much fun. I was obsessed with this when I read it. And I even remember that the ending, the ending left me shocked. Then I just never picked up the sequel. And then the third book came out and I don't even think I ever heard anything about the third book. This one is following three different characters and this war between Earth and Mars. It is part space opera epic, part mystery, part drama. It was just so much fun. I loved all of the perspectives. I loved all the storylines and then seeing how they came together was like brilliant. All right, and then the last category are my push picks. These are all ones that I really want to read, but I just need that extra motivation to read them. So the first one that I have here is part of my entire 2024 reading challenge that I'm doing where I am going to be reading one classic a month. So I really could have picked any classic from that TBR to show here, but um, I went with Little Women. I've been wanting to read this for years. I love the Greta Gerwig Little Women movie 
that has made me really, really want to read this. But again, I just feel a little bit of intimidation anytime I think about a classic because the ones that I have read, I have loved. I just have this weird mental block with it, which is why I am trying to push myself this year to read one a month. Then I have Yumi and the Nightmare Painter by Brandon Sanderson. This one, I need the motivation to read because it's long. And also I'm still very, very new to Brandon Sanderson. The only book by him that I've read is Tress of the Emerald Sea. I loved that. I really, really loved that book. But again, I just find his books to be intimidating for whatever reason. I know there's been kind of conflicting reports on whether you can read this without having read his other Cosmere books. Some people say yes, some people say no. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not the type of person who cares about missing Easter eggs. I really don't. I don't even know yet how many of his books I will read. I just know that I'm interested in this one and I would like to read it. If anything, it will just be the beautiful book that I have back here to go alongside Tress. And then the very last book that I have here that is one of my push picks is Starling House by Alex E. Harrow. This is on here simply because I have disliked every Alex E. Harrow book that I've read. And this is kind of my, my final attempt to like one of her books. I do feel like out of all of them, this has the highest likelihood that I will enjoy it. I mean, also, I just have this stunning, beautiful edition, and I would really like to read it. And I do have that series on my channel where I give authors that I've disliked a second chance. I always like to give authors second chances. I mean, in this case, it's actually more like a fourth chance. But in doing that series, I have actually found some favorite books from authors who I previously hated. I don't like to give up fully on authors because you never know when you're gonna find that one book that is just meant for you. So I do think this will be my final attempt on Alex E. Harrow. And if I don't like this, I can fully say she's just not for me. So those are all of the books that I have on my 2024 TBR. As I'm holding this stack, I realize I have a lot of very chunky long books on here. Why did I do that? I don't know. Also, this is very heavy. Why am I still holding it up? Let me know in the comments out of all these books, which ones are you the most interested in hearing about? Which ones should I prioritize the most? If you noticed, there are no new releases on here or upcoming releases. I have an entire video on my Patreon where I talk about like 60 of the books coming out this year that I am the most excited to read. I really just wanted to focus this video on books that I already own, kind of more my backlist. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and check out my Patreon where I post tons of exclusive content. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.